Welcome to another edition of Beards Without Borders. My name is George Bruno, also known as the Sultan of Silver. This is the windy, rainy, humid night edition. I set, uh, started setting up on the deck outside, and then it started raining. I had the zombie gnome and everything out there, and uh, it started raining, so I came into the Van Gogh room. I call it the Van Gogh room. It's the half of a tool shed which I have converted pretty much into like a man cave kind of thing. So, And I've got a couple oil lamps and a propane heater, and it's hotter than a hooker's doorknob tonight. So tonight, brought to you by Patron. Limeade, which I need a sip of. The square shot glass, of course. Mmm. Love my sip and tequila. And of course, the 60 year old MacArthur corn cob pipe. We're going to talk about this tonight. stuff. This is, uh, I don't know if you can read this, Haunted Bookshop. Haunted Bookshop is a burly blend that will pretty much knock you on your butt. So I probably should have a short session tonight because it's going to be uh, between the Patron and the Haunted Bookshop. I picked this up at an auction, 60 years old. One of the reasons why I like old things, and I'm trying not to be too much of a collector, I have in the past, my goal is to get rid of 75% of my belongings in the next two years. I want to own very little, except stuff that I use. I'm just tired of collecting things, So, except books. I like my books. When I think about a pipe, now of course it's cleaned and sanitized. One owner pipe. Sixty years old, it's older than me. When I think about some of the problems that were thought about when the original owner was puffing away on this, because you don't hurry up a pipe. It's not like I'm, you can go out and have a quick cigarette, which I don't smoke. I like pipes and cigars. You can't go out and have a quick pipe unless, ha, I got one of these little tiny things. Uh, that's a quick pipe. This is not a quick pipe. You think about things when you smoke a pipe or a cigar. You listen to nature. You think about issues. You think about your goals. What was going through the guy's mind? Well, who's to say it was a guy, right? Could be a woman. I doubt it. There are a few, few women who follow me who are actually pipe and cigar smokers. It's kind of funny. What was he thinking about? What problems was he solving? What was he planning? What was he grieving? What was he regretting? And I don't believe object, inanimate objects hold powers. I don't believe there's a spirit inside of this. It's just kind of fun to think about what a person may have been going through in their life. Was he in his last years when he smoked this? You know, it's been said about pipes, you don't own them, you're just a steward, because they outlive you.
I love the story of J.R.R. Tolkien grading papers on a hot August night like this, hotter than a hooker's doorknob, grading papers at Oxford University, hot, no air conditioning, just maybe a fan going. And he's grading papers, and he stops grading for a second, and he just looks up, and he was probably smoking a pipe, most likely, when you look at old video footage of Tolkien. He and C.S. Lewis were both pipe smokers. He stops, takes a piece of scrap paper, and writes on the scrap paper, in a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. And then he pushes the paper away and goes back to grading papers. The beginning of Lord of the Rings. To have that pipe in my hand. At Wheaton College in the library there's the, uh, a pipe that was owned by C.S. Lewis. Oh, to have that pipe. I would love to have that pipe. C.S. Lewis is probably one of the most influential men in my life. I would encourage you to read anything that he has written. Anything. Any, start anywhere. The story is that he was a professor at Oxford with J.R.R. Tolkien. After class, they would go to a pub not far from Oxford, called the Eagle and the Child, I believe. That was the name of it. Strange name. And it is still there. And they would sit at a table that they got every single day. And they would fire up pipes and talk about characters that they were coming up with. Middle Earth, The Hobbit, Narnia. Did you know that they wrote with ink and pen? Not with a typewriter. Interesting. Other professors kind of mocked them and called them the Inklings. Hey, are the Inklings here today? Yeah, they're over there in the corner. Imagine writing a complete book with pen and ink. To have C.S. Lewis's pipe would be, I would just love to fire up a bowl <laughs> in the pipe that he smoked when he wrote screw tape letters or the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. My lord, wow. One of my favorite quotes from C.S. Lewis is when he talks about prayer. And in the movie Shadowlands, which I highly recommend, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. <clears throat> he, his friends are mocking him about prayer and speaking to God. And, you know, their comment basically was, do you think you're going to change God's mind by praying? His response was, I don't pray to change God's mind. I pray to change mine. It said that C.S. Lewis 
smoked three nun, three nuns tobacco, which I have. Interesting. Of course, I had to get it. And Tolkien smoked capstan flake. Sometimes when I'm out here in the uh, shed, I kind of envision myself just being in the woods in a cabin or in the down in a boat somewhere. I've got my oil lamp here and I just sometimes I'll just go like this with it, make it swing a little bit just to kind of give me the vibe of being on a boat. <laughs> strange, I know. We all have strange things that we do. But maybe, I don't know, I, I feel like an old sea captain. Now that I look like one, or I, I felt like one for many years, now I look like one. My looks are catching up with how I felt inside. The wind was blowing so hard tonight, I had three candles set up on the table on the back deck. I had the Patron out there, everything was ready to rock for little beards without borders, and then all of a sudden it started raining. Now it stopped. And that wind was blowing so hard the umbrella was just going around in circles. I will be in Nashville September 3rd. I'm going to be a judge at the National Beard and Mustache Championship. I hope to see you there. Introduce yourself. A lot of times your handle on YouTube and Instagram is different than your name. I only know you by your handle, your internet, your web name, not necessarily your real name. So if you happen to be there, tell me your web name and then tell me your real name. That way I can call you by your real name. Even though my channel is Gray Bailey, which is my business. It's going to be fun. I come out here in the wintertime. I have a propane heater in the corner. I fire up two oil lamps and I can raise the temperature here. I mean, if it's 10 degrees, I can raise it up to 30, <laughs> like a heat wave. And it's bearable and I put a, uh, I have a wool blanket that I put on my lap like an old man, just to take the chill off. Now on the other side of this shed is garden tools, some storage. On this side is a, a messy table with various what I call my outdoor tobaccos where there's all kinds of fluctuation of temperature out here. All of my good tobaccos, uh, I put, um, I keep them in mason jars in the house. When I buy a tin, I put it in this. I have over a hundred tobaccos that are aging beautifully and I smoke them on occasion. I put all my tobacco tins, let me show you, let me see if I can move this up top. Now take a look up on like the, uh, I don't know if you can see, wait, let me just loosen this just so you can see the uh, Wait one second. Can you see up there? All around, I have all my tobacco tins up there and some bottles, of course. And they're kind of decorative, so to speak. I'm having fun with my rescue cats. My God. It wasn't that long ago that they were just born underneath the deck of uh, my back deck, and I'm, I'm having a blast with them. They're so much fun. I have six cats now. <laughs> it takes patience because they're feral, which means they were born in the wild. 
They weren't born in a box in my house or in my basement. They were born under the deck and in the woods. So they've got this wild nature. These are not like domesticated. They're wild as heck. And it's like watching like a animal planet or something. It's they they stalk, they they have like these instincts that are not domesticated out of them. They'll be sitting on your lap one second and just like flying off towards a like a little bug f flying around the house and they're chasing each other and they're territorial and my god it's and I've had house cats before but I've never had feral cats. I've had feral cats now for uh, two years and they're amazing. I've, the lessons that I learned from them, how they look after each other, it's just, and it's built into them. Why can't we do that as human beings? You know, we're territorial for a reason. We have borders for a reason for our countries. But here, between you and me, this is Beards Without Borders, because I know you right there, you're watching me from Iran. You're watching me from down under. You're watching me from Scotland, Brazil, Canada, Kansas, California, Pennsylvania, Florida, Germany, Sweden. I know it because I get your emails every single day. And I'm so happy. Some people have called me the Bob Ross of... <laughs> the Bob Ross of the hair industry. Now... That's interesting. I'm a pretty mellow dude, except in the morning when I do rise and shine after a cup cup or two of coffee, and I'm rise and shine, mothers and brothers. Shout out to Tommy G. Take a look at my Instagram page and you see Tommy Galanders, wonderful fella. Been cutting his hair and trimming his beard for, shaping his beard for years now. Uh, people bring me bottles of bourbon, wine, whiskey, usually the last client of the day. Not where I'm working now, I can't do it. But up till now, up till recently, because I've only been at this current place for a few months. I would, my last client of the day, I would always pour a shot for both of us and we would just sip it and talk and Tommy G brought me a Fuente shade grown cigar wrapped in cedar and a short story see that it's about as big as my finger big fan of cigars let me just get a whiff of this baby It's got like that little torpedo shape on it. Take a look. See that? Yes. Oh. Oh my gosh. I should be firing this dog up tonight, man. Hmm. Are you guys in the cigars at all? Once you get over the uh, the initial smell of tobacco, a lot of people will say, "Man, it smells like a turd." It's no. It's 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 aged tobacco. It's earthy. And as tobaccos age, they release their sugars, which makes them sweet. It's very distinct. I love it. There's times where I will carry a cigar in my shirt pocket, and you'll see like pictures of me with a cigar hanging out of my pocket. And I will carry it all day, and on my break, I take it out of a tube or the wrapper and just smell it. Sometimes I'll just put it in my mouth, you know. I'll just put it back in the wrapper. And then I fire it up at night. It's like my reward for being good all day. How do you reward yourself at the end of your day? Do you play like a little game? If you if you complete A, B, and C, you, you reward yourself with something? I do that all the time. Simple. I'm a simple mind. Nice little box of matches. So... So Tommy G brought me these cigars. I'll fire them up at an, uh, during another episode of Beards Without Borders. Fuente 
shade grown wrapper as opposed to sun a sun grown wrapper and uh, a short story thank you Tommy G much appreciated I call this the Van Gogh room because I have let me just show you you might have seen it before I have um, Van Gogh prints on the walls. I find them in yard sales, thrift stores, that type of thing. And I love the solitude and the introspection of guys like Vincent Van Gogh. He was a theological man, uh, an artist, as I am. And uh, I don't want to say a tortured artist, but he he was into solitude. He wrote, he ended his letters with loving Vincent. And I love that. And I, I, lo I wish I could zoom in on his signature on this sunflowers print. I, for some reason, I love his signature. I don't know why. I have, you know, I have one, a couple paintings of mine Oh, I'm not, I, I can't show them to you now. i got to turn the camera around. There's a couple paintings of mine in here. This reminds me of a ship, doesn't it? Like the, <laughs> like I'm anchored or tied up in a harbor somewhere. And uh, I have a friend who has a sailboat on the Delaware River, James Jones. It must be fun spending time on a sailboat, even by yourself. Have you learned how to be by yourself? Have you learned that? Have you learned how to not have a vacuum in your life? Have you learned to accept yourself? Have you learned to look at your faults and embrace them? Remember in, in one episode we talk about embracing what makes you different. Have you embraced what makes you different? There's times when I'm down at the shore house and I'll see on the boardwalk sometimes the kids that like dye their hair black and they got the black fingernails and the big floppy hair coming down like that and they're wearing like military green and they got the skateboards and all that. I call them the skateboard kids. And they dress like that because they want to be different. But the joke is they want to be different like everybody else. And at the moment that you become different like everybody else, guess what? You're no longer different. You've joined the crowd. I love being unique. I love being one of a kind. I've tried being other things my entire life. I've tried different things. I just I can't do it. It's too hard to keep that facade up. Hey, did I ever show you my tamper? This is from a 150-year-old pipe organ called the Principal 8. That's a, it's an organ stop. If you look at pipe organs, they got those little stops that they pull out. The Principal 8 is one of the largest pipes on a pipe organ. And at the end of an organ concerto or a, a composition, there's always that one note at the very end that just shakes and rattles the stained glass windows. That comes from the Principal 8. When I saw this in a thrift store, no one knew what it was. It's a 150-year-old German pipe organ stop. I use it as a tamper for my pipe. Think about the hearts that were comforted with hymns and music that came from this organ. Think about how people got stimulated to action or humbled to their knees because of singing a hymn or a song that was accompanied by this pipe organ. Blows my mind. You tamp your pipe to keep the uh, to keep the 
ember glowing. And then you smoke a pipe until there's nothing but a fine white ash at the bottom. The tobacco that doesn't get burnt or combusted when you're tapping the pipe and cleaning it, that was called dottle. But you want to pack it to the point skillfully where all of the tobacco burns down. You don't want dottle. It's a waste of tobacco. I took a bowl and I put a cork knocker in it. Can you see that? And that's, I won't do it with this pipe, but when you're done smoking a pipe, Never tap it on anything, cement or anything like that. I just put this adhesive knocker at the bottom of a bowl, and then I just, like that. Cork knocker, it's called. Holy crap, it's hot out here, man. Those ice cubes melted so darn fast out here. I like limeade better than lemonade. You ever see that simply, simply lemonade, simply lime, simply lemon, whatever. I get the simply lime. For some reason I like lime better than lemon. I don't know why. Maybe that's why I like margaritas. I like my sipping tequilas, <clears throat> the square. For those of you who are first timers here. I like a square shot glass. Can you see that? It's square. That way I drink through a corner and the tequila or whiskey or bourbon or whatever I'm sipping goes into my mouth and not through my mustache. Like here's a regular shot glass. You know when you're when you're sipping from a regular shot glass it goes through my mustache. When I have the square one, then I have a whole set of these square tequila glasses. Hmm. I always close my eyes after a sip because I just, I can actually taste, I can taste the agave, I can taste the earth that it was grown in, I can taste the altitude if it was grown on a mountain, a hill, in a valley, in the sun, in the shade. I can tell if it's volcanic soil, I can tell if it was grown close to the ocean, because I can taste the salt in it. I was turned on to Patron, uh, not because it's like the expensive favorite of everybody, I was turned on to it because John Paul DeGioia, the founder of Paul Mitchell Systems, who is my hair industry idol and business idol owns the Patron company. He actually runs his Harley Davidson on Patron tequila. It's such a high alcohol content, it combusts cleaner than any petroleum product. Mm. Well, we're coming close to an end here. I don't like to go over 30 minutes. Because if I have to edit this thing and put two pieces together, they always go out of sync. If you get a chance, Google the Tobacco Haunted Bookshop. It's from a, uh, a story. And, the, and what Haunted Bookshop means is it's about a bookstore and the stories and the history in the bookstore, which is consistent with my whole thing of smoking a 60-year-old pipe. I actually have a 110-year-old pipe. A Dunhill. I'll show that to you sometime. I bid you peace. Seek peace, my friends. When you're at peace, you can pursue your goals smoothly and efficiently. You can love better. You're going to be happier with yourself. You will provide. When you're at peace, if you're a single man like I am, you can provide peace to other people. You can't provide something that you don't have. So, when I finally offer myself to a woman for the rest of my life, one of the qualities that I want her to 
say that I have when, when her friend says, so what is he like? I want her to say he's peaceful. He's a peaceful man. I feel peace when I'm around him. I can't think of a, a higher compliment than that. And that's what I hope to impart to you. I'm hearing crickets and cicadas outside. The wind is not blowing. It's not raining anymore. The only thing better would be the creaking of a ship and me rocking as I'm talking to you and this light just swinging. That would be kind of fun. Maybe someday. Maybe someday I'll do Beards Without Borders from a sailboat. Wouldn't that be fun? I hope, to, I hope that you can join me sometime and we can have kind of a Beards Without Borders talk. Just set up the camera and people talk. That would be fun. I like that. What would you like? What's a ideal scenario for you? What kind of things do you think about when it comes to peace? I know some of you are from countries where there's not a lot of peace right now and you've emailed me and you've shared those things with me about things, situations that you've been in and relatives that are not in peaceful situations. And I feel for you. I don't feel sorry for you. I feel with you. That's called empathy. It's not sympathy. Sympathy is when you feel sorry for somebody. Empathy is when you feel sorry with them. the end of another broadcast. Thank you so much. I know it's been a while since I did a, a little Beards Without Borders and many people have said that uh, I should separate my YouTube channel into different sections. So I'm starting to do beard and mustache tat uh, tutorials. Tatorials. Hey, now there's something, a tattoo channel called Tatorials. <laughs> so I have beard and mustache tator tutorials I have life and business coaching, which includes a lot of the rise and shine stuff, and then I have beards without borders. Hmm. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to go in and watch a Netflix movie tonight. I'm not sure what I'm going to watch. Do you have a movie suggestion for me that you think I would like? You know what I like? <laughs> I've always been a monster movie fan and horror, but not like demon stuff. I'm not into the whole demons thing. But I do like 